Hello everyone, this is uh, Bob Browner with uh, Community Coronavirus Update number 50, and the theme today is the Wayne Gretzky quote about skating where the puck's going to be, not where it is right now, or was, well, unfortunately, three weeks ago as it kind of pertains to coronavirus. So, how are we doing in the state? Well, uh, Lancaster County, we're up to uh, almost 80 per 100,000. Maybe it's peaking. I sure hope so. Uh, Douglas and Sarpy County got a huge peak in cases uh, yesterday. Some of these apparently were some old ones that didn't get booked pro properly, so we're not sure what's going on with the data, but they're up at the 124 per 100,000. Uh, the rest of the state, they're up in that 125 per 100,000. Uh, this is as bad as New York was in the spring. And so unfortunately, uh, much of Nebraska is going to be headed toward a New York experience, uh, whether they realize it or not, in the coming weeks. And that's the big problem is that we are not looking ahead. We're, we're being very reactive instead of being proactive. It's kind of like we're waiting to hit the brakes until we've already ran into something. Uh, and so why do I say that? Well, we know uh, based on prior experience that hospitalizations follow infections by about three weeks and death uh, follow about, about about a month, unfortunately. And so uh, basically because we know that, we know that where we're headed, we're at 978 hospitalizations today. That was based on the infections three weeks ago. We have booked those expenses already, unfortunately. And if we project forward, uh, we're going to be over, well over 2,000 uh, hospitalizations uh, in, in, about, in another three weeks. On top of that, our, our deaths are going to go up. We're about 84 per week. We're going to be over 200 per week uh, by this time next month. So why are we waiting? We need to be proactive, not reactive. Uh, you know, the governor has said he's not going to do anything until we've hit this 25% of hospitals. We're going to be there in, in you know, seven to 10 days. So what are we waiting for? Um, how good are these projections? Well, three weeks ago I said, well, based on current numbers, we're going to hit about 700 to 800 project, uh, uh, hospitalizations in three weeks. Uh, I underbid. Uh, we actually hit 978. And why was I under? Well, the reason I was under is because the demographics have changed. Uh, before, it was uh, a lot of uh, young people, college kids, people who goes in bars and restaurants were getting infected. They don't die as much and get hospitalized as much. They brought it home to mom and dad and grandma and grandpa. And so the people getting infected now are from an older age group. And so they're getting sicker, going to the hospital and dying more, unfortunately. Uh, and this is what all the experts predicted would happen. But uh, unfortunately, too many political leaders ignored that prediction. Um, and so what we need to quit doing is skating to where the puck was. We already know where the puck is going to be. Let's start going there and quit uh, dinking around. Um, uh, a few weeks back, I used the, the analogy of accrual accounting versus cash basis accounting because these are supposed to be management professionals running things who should understand that most businesses move from cash basis to accrual because they know that when those expenses are booked, they should start planning for them now, not waiting. Just like uh, even though most of us in our personal lives use cash basis uh, for our checking account, we do know that the rent's coming due or our house payment's due and we plan for it. Why are we not planning for this? We know those expenses are coming. Uh, and so essentially, we've already booked the, all the infections uh, that are going to lead to over 2,000 uh, hospitalizations. That's literally already happened. So we're not going to act now to prevent us getting, to, getting over 2,000 2, hospitalizations. That's going to happen. We're, we need to act now so we don't hit 3,000 a month from now. Uh, and so uh, the hospitals are getting overwhelmed. We need to do something. Uh, we could project it even better than what I've done now, but I don't have that access to that kind of information. Our, our state does have that kind of information. And so how would that look? Well, this is I pulled off of the state website this morning. We can see how many people who were infected and the, how many positives they had by each age group. We can see how many ended up in the hospital and then how many people died. We know that for every 100 uh, people that are infected between the ages of 55 and 64, we'll have five hospitalizations and a death. If they're between 65 and 74, for every 100 infections we get, we know that in the next couple of weeks, we'll get 10 hospitalizations and two more deaths. So we should be able to project forward. We have the ability to do that. I don't know why the state isn't doing something like that. Is it because they haven't thought to do it, uh, which is kind of scary, or have they done it and are they hiding that information, which is also kind of scary. I'm not sure which is the explanation. Uh, the other thing that's most worrisome is the fatality rate has dropped a bit the last six months because our doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists have gotten so much better at treating this. Uh, unlike New York, where the mortality rates were in the 1% to 2%, we know nationally it's low, lower than that now. Unfortunately, that fatality rate is going to go right back up again. It's because we're going to run out of nurses and respiratory therapists and supplies. And so these low fatality rates we're seeing now are not going to hold true a month from now because our system will be overwhelmed and will not have the experienced nurses and doctors and respiratory therapists to take care of everybody. And it's even worse than that because when you overwhelm the hospital, people don't just die of coronavirus at higher rates, they die of everything else at higher rates. Um, essentially, we're going to run out of stuff, uh, and so uh, we need to do something. And so if you caught uh, uh, our, the news conference on Friday with the mayor, 
uh, Jeff Jarrett dialed in, dialed in from the ICU. It was very moving because you saw him starting to crack up toward the end a little bit. Um, I don't think the general public understands how bad it is to work in that environment. I, I, I'm out of clinical practice, but I still remember the first time I had a patient die in my hands and had to tell her husband uh, that, 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 uh, that she had died. Uh, that was in the Fremont emergency room 25 years ago. Uh, I still remember the first time I had an infant die in front of me uh, and had to go tell her mom. That was 20 years ago in the, in the Sydney emergency room back when I was a small town doc. Uh, these doctors and nurses are having to have those conversations multiple times a week, and by next month they'll be having those conversations multiple times a day. The public needs to understand what kind of how bad the environment we're placing these doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists in. We need to do it for them, if nothing else. Uh, I was, you know, very. Uh, it was very moving to see the community come out after Officer Herrera died. Uh, well, what about these? I mean, why, are, why is there not that similar outpouring? Because some of these doctors and nurses, respiratory therapists, some of them are probably going to get infected and some of them may die as well. This is all preventable. So uh, what you're seeing now is articles about what happens when hospitals run out of stuff, when they run out of, they exceed nurses' capacity and everything else. Then you start having people die of heart attacks and strokes and everything else because we just literally don't have enough to treat everybody. Uh, that's where we're headed. Uh, here we are, and it's not just the United States that's done this. So people like to always say how, you know, some folks in, of a particular political persuasion seem to love Europeans, but some of the European countries have screwed up just as bad or worse than us. Uh, so Switzerland, all their intensive beds are full because they kind of hit their pandemic fit, fantigue and anger and let it get out of control, although they're starting to change, get uh, wake up now. Uh, but other countries have, have fixed their problems. So the Israelis, they sent their kids to school without masks and had a bunch of outbreaks, unfortunately. They finally, they sent them back home, then put them back on masks, then they had their other issues, but they got under control. And when you put the right intervention in place, you switch this around literally in, in weeks. This, we're not talking months. You can switch this around in weeks. Another example I like to use is Ireland because about 25% of, of us Americans have Irish descent. Uh, they initially had a worse outbreak in the United States, but they got it under control, did a great job all over the summer, kind of got their pandemic fatigue and anger issues, uh, and then the things got under out of control. They closed down their pubs quickly, switched to takeout for the restaurants, and within weeks they got theirs under control as well. So it's time to get past the denial and rip off the Band-Aid. We need to do something. Um, that's why James Lawler came out last week. You saw him in the Lincoln paper. We need to do this right now. We need to ban all gatherings of more than 10 people. We need to temporarily, not permanently, temporarily close all indoor dining bars and clubs. Uh, we've done some, some de-densification in our schools already, and we need a mandate wearing a face mask in public, and it needs to be an enforced mandate. Um, Utah did this. Uh, their numbers weren't as bad as ours. They put their stuff in place. We'll probably start seeing them dropping if they got under control. Nebraska is still on its way up. Um, Utah governor, like I say, he reversed himself and uh, says that businesses that fail to comply will face fines. Um, you've now seen the North Dakota governor, now the Iowa governor yesterday, all of them finally waking up and smelling the coffee. Uh, we can stop this, uh, but we need an enforced indoor mask ordinance. And until our rates get down to five to 10, five to 10 per hundred thousand, which can happen in a matter of weeks, by the way, we need to temporarily halt on all these indoor binding, dining guards. Uh, we did temporarily halt our extracurricular activities. I know there's a lot of parents that are angry about this, but it needs to be done. And we need to ban all indoor gatherings of more than 10 people for a couple of weeks. Uh, here's the Iowa governor. Uh, nobody wants to do this. Uh, we're not enjoying this. It just needs to be done. And as she said, if Wyomans don't buy into this, we'll lose. Businesses will close again. More schools will be forced to go online and our healthcare system will fail. Uh, you know, and you have to wear the mask right. Uh, I went to the quick shop to get some protein for our heater Sunday. I walk in, half the people are walking in and out not wearing masks. Well, I actually didn't walk in. I just at, told the clerk from the door I needed propane and the clerk's not wearing her mask properly. She's got, she's a nose commando. So put your nose mask on correctly. Uh, just wearing it this way does not work. You've got to put it over your nose, otherwise it's worthless. Uh, and it needs to be enforced. Um, the Japanese figured this out six months ago. Uh, if we had done as well as the Japanese, we'd only have 4,000 dead Americans instead of 250,000 dead Americans. Uh, almost all of them are wearing masks, and you've got to get to the point where 90, 95% of people are wearing masks for this to work. Uh, they figured out the closed spaces, crowded places, con closed contact settings six months ago. These are not places ne you should be. Uh, this is a, just like a restaurant, for example. So one of my frustrations is I try to support our restaurants. I like our restaurant scene. And so my wife and I, we try to eat, eat outside at the restaurant. We don't go in because of signs like this, actually, uh, or at least do takeout to help them over the winter. Uh, but you can't uh, sit down and take off your mask at the table. I don't know what this is thinking. Masks are not required when you sit at a table. Well, there's not a six-foot dome over your table. It's still going to spread. And we've known it's going to spread uh, throughout a restaurant. 
uh, some epidemiologic studies from months ago. You know, one person at this table getting infected, uh, affecting these people at this table, but also the people at this table and this table as well. Uh, this example from a Starbucks where one person affected 27 others. So just because you're sitting at a table doesn't mean you can take your mask off. You do not have a six-foot dome over you protecting you. Uh, so if you're uh, sitting at a table, you can take your mask off to take a drink because when you take a drink, you hold your breath and then only take off the mask to eat quickly. Then it might be safe to be in a restaurant, but it is right now not safe right now with the way things are being done. Uh, and we need to have our uh, this done so that we can keep our schools open. So I guess one thing most European countries have done right is they prioritize their schools over cocktails. Um, we need to start getting our priorities straight. Uh, we've learned that, that schools can actually operate safely. Uh, they're all wearing masks. Uh, we've de-densified a bit in most of our schools, but in elementary, thankfully, the school, the uh, infection, the kids are much less efficient spreaders, uh, and so we can do schools safely as long as we keep everything else. And so, much like the Germans did much better than the Swiss, uh, they shut down their restaurants, bars, and theaters when things got worse, but they kept their schools open, and so we need to get our priorities straight in the United States. Uh, the school decision, like I keep telling people, it's not just a risk versus, it's a risk versus a big risk. Uh, we, we probably saw in the newspaper today that our graduation rate dropped a little bit because of coronavirus. Those educational losses that kids may have uh, can build up over a lifetime. Uh, we have mental health concerns that happen, access to healthy food. We have the needs of working parents. All those doctors, nurses, respiratory therapists working their butts off in the hospital, they can't be at home uh, doing Zoom with their second grader. So we need kids, those kids in school so we, those doctors and nurses can work. Uh, also, the school structure may decrease overall community spread because even if there were a little bit of spread in school it'd be worse if they weren't in school and lastly I just have a hard time making our kid, children pair the burdens of our bad, bad adult behavior and I think some of the mental health concerns are kids is they're seeing how bad us adults are managing this whole thing it's frustrating to them I've talked to my own children they're frustrated that our, we've gotten so dysfunctional in the United States that's part of their mental health issues is seeing us adults doing such a bad job at this so we can stop this. So if we can get our rates below five to 10 per 100,000, then we can open up the dar dining bars and coffee shops if we do it correctly. We do have widely available rapid testing now. Uh, so, so most of our tests are coming back in less than 48 hours. That allows us to do the contact tracing that we need to, need to do. So Ali Khan's got this uh, plan. He's got it up and ready to go. He's done this for his entire career. We can put this in place, but right now the spread is so much that contact tracing is almost worthless. That's because we've got too much. We need to slow it down to the point where contact tracing could work, and we could open up a lot of stuff, and it's only going to take us weeks to get there. So we can stop this. Uh, we do not need to stay at home or shelter in place. I've never been an advocate for that. We don't need to close our schools. We just have to make some, put the right things in place. And we also don't need to socially isolate. We, just, we can get together. We just have to do it safely. Uh, so, for example, if you're going to go out to a restaurant, eat outside. I, uh, we, like I say, we try to support our restaurants, and we're going to keep doing so. Every time it's a nice day, we're going to go, but we're going to eat outside, not inside. Uh, you do need to get out and get some exercise. Uh, we know that uh, people who are obese die at higher rates, but I think it's not because they're obese. It's because obese people are less physically fit. So you need to get outside and exercise, walk, go for a bike ride, something like that. Thankfully, in Lincoln, we've got a great trail system. Uh, you can get together with your family. Just do it safely. So whenever the weather's nice outside, uh, dress warm. Uh, we had blankets, so we did get a propane heater. Uh, and so we can get together uh, with our with our relatives. If we do, we just need to do it outdoors where there's plenty of ventilation. Uh, you know, let's take a lesson from the Norwegians who have a saying that there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. We just got to bundle up uh, and, and try to get through the winter. Um, and the reason we need to get through the winter is because there's hope on the way. Uh, the vaccine results are coming out better than anybody had hoped. So, but not just the Pfizer, but the Moderna vaccine. And the Moderna vaccine is important because it doesn't have to be refrigerated for as cold the temperatures as the Pfizer vaccine. So it's going to be easier from a logistics standpoint. And the effectiveness was 94%. That's way better than everybody was hoping. The, the, the minimum was 50%. Fauci was hoping for 60 or 70. Uh, this is about as good a news as we could have gotten here this past week. So we need to hold it together and prevent the deaths of a couple thousand Nebraskans because hope is on the way. Uh, there's a good chance we'll be vaccinating uh, healthcare personnel and nursing home pay, uh, folks uh, by the end of December, beginning of January, and potentially widely vaccinating everybody else by March or April. So hold it together. Let's get it under control and prevent the deaths of thousands of Nebraskans. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. You do, do avoid the herd mentality, folks. Wear your mask, keep your distance, the three C's, uh, and wash your hands and you know, do your best to be outside even though the weather is cold. 
Uh, so hopefully this is helpful for you too. This is what I do for a living, so you know what I do. Uh, it's not necessarily the opinion of everybody uh, who, where I work, but I'm, I'm sure the, they're mostly okay with this. Uh, HealthyLincoln.org, if you go to this website, our past videos are on there. You can also uh, sign up as a YouTube channel, and I will keep doing these videos. I hope I don't get to 100. I hope I get to 60 or 70, and we can stop this.